Okay, this session we'll conduct in English. Uh, so IQ Ideas presents higher education opportunities in India. Uh, I'm going to talk on uh, five, six things today. I will talk to you about how a career assessment and selection should take place. What are the higher education verticals available in India? I'll talk to you about the qualities which are required in a candidate to join any one particular vertical. I will also talk to you about the eligibility criteria in terms of the combination of subjects which the candidate should take in grade 11 and 12 in order to join a particular vertical. Along with that, I will talk to you about the entry procedures and after finishing degree in a particular vertical, what are the career prospects which are open to the candidates? That is what I'm going to talk to you in this presentation today. Let Please. us quickly talk about the prevalent combination which is available after 10 in the current system. In the current education system, we have first combination which is known as physics, chemistry, mathematics, popularly called as science A group or engineering group. Second is the combination of physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology, which is popularly known as AB group. Third combination which is prevalent is physics, chemistry and biology, popularly known as medical group or science B group. Fourth option is the combination of accounts, statistics, economics and business studies, popularly known as the commerce group or the commercial studies group. And fifth combination which is prevalent in the current education system is the combination of history, geography, political science, sociology and psychology. This combination is popularly known as humanities or arts combination. Now I'll give you a small example. Excuse Why me, sir? education policy, sir? Sir, uh, change your set uh, chat box setting for okay. everyone. Everyone. Okay, I shall do that, sir. I hope it is done to everyone. Yes, I've done it, sir. <clears throat> now okay, sir. I'll give you a small example. If somebody wants to join Indian Army technical branch, Indian Air Force or Indian Navy. The eligibility for joining any one of the courses there is the candidate should have studied mathematics and physics as compulsory subject in 11, 12. Even for that matter, if somebody wants to get into piloting, the, the eligibility criteria is maths and physics. But till now in the prevalent education system, if somebody wants to study physics and mathematics, Chemistry by and large is something which the candidate will have to study. So this is something which is going to get waved off as per the new education policy. So what is going to happen in the new education policy? There will be a lot of wide variety of subjects which shall be offered to the candidates primarily from grade nine onwards. There'll be more liberal combinations which will be allowed. I have already shared with you the prevalent combinations which are allowed in the current system. But if somebody wants to study, let us say physics along with accounts or somebody wants to study economics along with mathematics. So more liberal combinations shall be available to the candidates to pick and choose as far as their grade 11 and 12 is concerned. And most important thing which I have found in the new education policy is that there will be no hard separation between curricular, co-curricular or extracurricular activities. There will be no separation which will be there in academic and vocational orientation subjects. Science and humanities will be taken at an equivalent level and there will be again no hardcore separation. If somebody wants to take physics with history, or chemistry with sociology, the candidate shall be allowed to take. And also there will be no hard separation between sports, art or academics. This is what new education policy does or say. Now let me start with the career assessment and selection process. Whenever we choose a career for a candidate, we try to look at four things as far as the child's assessment is concerned. Those four parameters for right career selection are identifying the child's orientation, the child's aptitude, personality and interest. 
I'll spend two minutes here to quickly make you understand each one of them. First, let's talk about orientation. When we talk about orientation, whichever candidate we pick up overall in the world, children can be divided in three categories. The first category is the category which we call our academic oriented children. They are children who love to study, gain knowledge, read educational books, watch educational videos, do a lot of academic research. They love to spend time with academia or books. They are known as academic oriented children. Second category of children are children whom we call are people oriented. They are not that great at academics, but they like more interaction with people, talking, discussing, debating, arguing. So basically, their source of knowledge is more interaction oriented. Those children are known as people oriented children. And the third category of children are children whom we call are practical, creative oriented children. They are those children who neither like to study too much nor like to interact too much. They like to do something which is hands on, which is more practical in nature. So they love to do things like drawing, dance, art, craft, music, sports, acting, mimicry, cookery, photography, filmmaking, cinematography, and so on. All these three orientations are there in every child. First thing which we need to understand is the child is highest in which orientation? Second level at which orientation? Third level at which orientation? Also, there are children who may be good at two orientation. The third orientation may be higher or may be lower than that. And also in rare cases, there are children who are a beautiful combination of all three orientations. This will become more clear to you when I talk to you about each vertical and the qualities required in the candidate for joining each vertical. So that will become more clear. So first thing which we need to understand about the child is the orientation. Second thing which we need to understand about the child is the child's aptitude. Now, what do we understand by aptitude? Basically, all those subject areas which may be academic or non-academic, curricular or extracurricular, which come quickly, naturally, and comfortably to the child is something which we call is the aptitude of the child. There are certain children who will naturally be very good at mathematics. There'll be certain children who will be naturally very good at playing guitar or very good at dancing. Those things which come naturally to the child form or build the base of aptitude of the child. Third thing which is important is the personality. Now, whatever career, or profession the child may think to join, we need to check does the personality of the child match with the profession which the child is trying to get into. For example, if the child has got very good aptitude towards legal studies, his orientation is academic, he has very strong interest in maybe becoming a lawyer, but his personality is such that he is unable to speak or his convincing skills are not great. In that case, we may assume that the personality of the child may not match with the other three parameters. So personality becomes the third important factor. And last but not the least, fourth important factor in career assessment and selection becomes the interest of the child. Now, there are a lot of children who would, uh, you know, come for counseling. When I do a brain mapping for them, I assess their aptitude, personality, orientation. Based on that, I suggest them to go for a particular field. And the kid may get up and say, sir, this is something which does not excite me, which does not interest me. I don't feel I'll be really, uh, you know, uh, getting a kick in spending time with this particular career or this particular profession. That means in spite of having an orientation aptitude and personality, the child may not carry the right interest. Thus, any career stream which we suggest to the candidate must match all four things. That is the orientation, aptitude, personality and interest of the child. 
we shall talk in detail about this when we get on to the next level of training in case all of you wish to help children in your respective schools to identify the right career options for your children now i quickly move on to the information base which is the central point of today's interaction there as i suggested and shared we have 20 verticals in which i will talk to you about the qualities required degrees available in india eligibility criteria and i shall talk to you about the entrance exams and the career prospects which the child can get into i have uh, sequenced all these 20 verticals in an alphabetical order so no vertical is good bad or worse than the other so i am starting with the agricultural sciences if the candidate is a beautiful mixture of academic and practical orientation the child is good with mathematics sciences and have affinity towards botany the child has interest in plants life sciences and the child has the ability to spend long hours with books and or computers both during study and is able to spend long hours in the field during practical application this sort of a candidate may be the right candidate for agricultural studies and what are the <clears throat> options which are available in degree programs in agriculture in india candidate can go for bsc in the area of agriculture sericulture horticulture forestry community science home science food nutrition and dietetics and next to that the candidate can go for a btech that is bachelor of technology program in the area of agriculture food technology dairy technology or biotechnology now eligibility criteria for getting into any of the agricultural sciences courses could be 10 plus 2 with combination of physics chemistry mathematics or physics chemistry biology and the entrance exams there are colleges who take candidates on different in different streams through the national eligibility commences test also there is something known as indian council of agricultural research which conducts its own exam known as all india and entrance examination for admission and also there are few colleges who take score from jwe main to get admission or give admission in the area of agricultural sciences beyond that there are most of the states who conduct their own national own state level entrance exams for admission in agricultural sciences courses those states would be gujarat madhya pradesh punjab uttar pradesh maharashtra andhra pradesh bihar haryana chhattisgarh himachal jharkhand jammu kashmir kerala odisha rajasthan and so on after finishing the degree one can become an agriculturist agricultural economist agronomist agricultural biotechnologist agriculture biochemist floriculturist food technologist fruit scientist horticulturist nut nutritionist plant pathologist sericulturist soil scientist or a vegetable scientist next we move to architectural planning if the candidate is a beautiful combination of academic and creative orientation the child is good with mathematics and sciences with strong visualization and observation the child has interest in building structures engineering drawing sketching and the candidate is in a position to spend long hours with books and or computers during study and in the field during practical application this sort of a candidate may be a great candidate for architecture or planning what are the degree options available in architectural planning one can go for bachelor of architecture five year program bachelor of interior design four year bachelor of planning which may be a three year or a four year and b tech in planning which is a four year program the eligibility criteria specifically for architecture shall remain combination of physics chemistry and mathematics in grade 11 and 12 and for other areas of planning or interior design one may go ahead with that with 10 plus 2 any stream or any subject combination just with mathematics as one of the subject in grade 11 and 12 and the national level exams for architecture remain nata along with that for uh, iits you have to give jwe main paper 2 followed by the architecture aptitude test rest most of the interior design or uh, planning courses do not take an entrance exam they might take students based on 12th marks 
the career options which are available after finishing a degree in architecture or planning or interior design one could become an archaeologist architect architectural engineer surveyor building inspector conservation officer interior designer landscape artist restoration architect architect special designer town planner or a urban planner next we talk about arts or humanities now if a candidate is a beautiful mixture of academic people and creative all three now i'm sure you will be in a position to understand when i'm talking about all three plus the candidate is good with the languages and social sciences with affinity towards theory reading candidate has good observation and analyzing power and the candidate is comfortable in versatile reading and writing this sort of a candidate may be the right candidate to go ahead with arts or humanities as a course and what are the options which are available in arts or humanities again lot of children when i talk to them on the counseling desk i ask them why did you not take arts or humanities the answer which i get is that there are lesser number of opportunities available after arts or humanities and there are more number of opportunities in other areas and that is the reason we have not taken arts or humanities but to prove that wrong you can look at your screen there are loads of specializations which are available in the area of arts and humanities which would include ba or ba honors in applied psychology in applied psychology archaeology economics education family and child welfare geography history industrial relations personal management journalism and mass media languages one can go ahead with which include indian languages like hindi urdu bengali sanskrit gujarati tamil or foreign language like english french german spanish arabic along with that one can go ahead with specialization in literature linguistics museology philosophy physical education and yoga political science psychology public administration social work or sociology next to that one can go ahead with uh ba in hotel management culinary arts bba a uh, ba llb which is a law program five year one can go for ba in dance ba in music ba in acting or one can go for ba in sports management and national level there are few entrance exams for which uh, the children can prepare during grade 12 and then get into these national level exams there is a test conducted by iit madras yes i am very clear iit madras iit madras has got a department of undergraduate department of humanities and social sciences and it conducts an exam known as hsee through which they take students right after grade 12 for five year integrated ba ma in english literature or five year integrated ba ma in developmental studies so this can be one exam which can be very good if some child is very strong with his or her linguistic skills otherwise tata institute of social sciences bombay conducts its own exam delhi university has its own exam for few courses in humanities christ university bangalore indipas university delhi aligarh muslim university aligarh jamia millia islamia they are all different universities which conduct their own exams for giving admission in the area of humanities or arts and after finishing humanities or arts one can become an anthropologist archaeologist curator editor geographer his, historian journalist linguist philosopher political scientist psychologist public administrator restorer sociologist social worker or a translator the quality check next is for business management if the candidate is a combination of people and practical orientation the candidate is good with the numerics and economics interest in field of business transactions business management business administration and the candidate is a street smart personality with ability to work with group as a team then that sort of a candidate may be a right candidate to go ahead with business management as a course and the degrees which are available in india in business management include bba bba honors bachelor of management studies bachelor of business studies or bba plus mba integrated program 
the eligibility criteria for getting into business management by and large remains 10 plus to any combination of subjects but there may be very few colleges which may require either mathematics or statistics as a compulsory program in 11th and 12th for business management and some of the national level entrance exams include ipm integrated program in management aptitude test which is conducted by iim indore and iim rohtak these are two iims which take students right after grade 12 into five year integrated programs beyond that a lot of private universities conduct their own exams for three year bba programs which may include narsi monji symbiosis pune delhi university manipal university bharti vidyapeeth pune jamia millia islamia delhi in the presidency delhi christ university bangalore uh, saint xavier in bombay kalinga university bhubaneswar msu in baroda karnavati university in ahmedabad jain university in bangalore Alliance University Bangalore and Shiv Nagar University in NCR. They are all national level private universities who conduct entrance exam for business management. After doing business management, one can become a manager or start managing different areas of administration, which may include brand, event, financial investment, human resource management, information technology, marketing management, market search management, public relations, project, risk, sales, social media, or supply chain. Beyond this, one can also start his or her own business and become an entrepreneur. Moving to commerce and finance. Again, here I like to clarify one thing. A lot of children take commerce or finance oriented subjects in grade 11 and 12, keeping in mind that probably commerce requires less study. Just to burst this myth, if you want to get into commerce or finance, these subjects are require a candidate to be academically oriented because commerce and finance involve a lot of mathematics, economics, numerics, and numbers overall. So if a candidate is good in maths, accounts, statistics, candidate has interest in financial management, data analysis, ability to spend long hours with data, and numbers on paper and or on computers if this is the quality set of the candidate he or she may be a very good candidate for commerce and finance and after taking 11 12 commerce and finance the degrees which are available to the candidate include bachelor of commerce bachelor of commerce honors bachelor of commerce professional bachelor of commerce sports management in computer sciences or one can go for bba finance bsc finance or can go for a five-year integrated law program become LLB. Also, there are higher level certifications which are available for commerce children, including CA, CS, CFA, CFP, CWA, CIA, or one can go for National Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange uh, certification, or one can get into becoming a certified actuary. Eligibility criteria, majorly for any of the area of commerce shall remain 10 plus to any combination. There may be very few colleges which may require maths or statistics as a compulsory subject in grade 11, 12 to get into commerce or finance area. And most of the private universities would conduct their own exams at national level, which include Narsi Monji Bombay, Christ University Bangalore, and the presidency Delhi, Jamia Millia Islamia Delhi, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, Delhi University, Alliance University, Jain University, Satya Sai University, Karnavati University, Pandindal Petroleum University. And there is also a national level entrance exam known as undergraduate aptitude test which is taken by a few universities to induct students for commerce and finance next we talk about uh, the professions one can become an actuary auditor banker chartered accountant company secretary cost and works accountant finance analyst finance planner finance controller investment analyst statistician stock broker tax auditor or a tax consultant Next, we move to computer applications. If the candidate is a beautiful combination of academic and practical orientation, is good with logic and has affinity towards doing new and innovative things on computer, is interested in gaining in-depth understanding and knowledge about how softwares work, how operating systems work, how overall a computer works, and the child has the ability to spend long hours on books, uh, on, on computers sitting in front of them then that sort of a candidate could be a very good candidate for computer application. Just another quick, uh, you know, clarification. A lot of children come to me after taking science A group in 11th, 12th with the thought process of getting into computers. And when I do a brain mapping, I assess 
that these children are not computer sciences or computer technology oriented children they are more computer application oriented children so if they want to get into computer application then 11th 12th science a group or physics chemistry maths combination is not required the degrees which fall under computer application arena are bachelor of computer application bachelor of uh, business administration in information technology bcom in computer sciences bsc in information technology or computer sciences bsc msc integrated or bc mc integrated and as i said the eligibility criteria for getting into any one of them is 10 plus 2 with any combination few colleges may require either maths or statistics or computer studies as a compulsory subject and at national level these entrance exams which are there for few colleges include symbiosis pune krishnas in bangalore undergraduate aptitude test which i shared with you is national level entrance exam in the prestige university delhi rajiv gandhi university bharti vidyapeet pune kalinga university bhubaneswar jain university bangalore geetam university sri satya sai university these are institutions which conduct entrance exams for uh, computer application <laughs> and after finishing computer application one can become an application designer artificial intelligence come expert this is a buzz word in the current generation audio and video technologist computer system analyst digital marketer is a buzz word ethical hacker is a buzz word game designer is a buzz word media programmer machine learning expert network engineer they are all buzz words which children come up with and they all fall under computer applications as a program otherwise one can become a programmer coder seo specialist scm specialist software engineer user interface or user experience expert vfx designer web developer or a website tester they are all options which are available for children again there had been some issue with the uh, but my internet connection is working uh, perfectly fine so we'll continue maybe there is some network issue on the recipients end next to be quickly talk about design who is the right candidate for design somebody who has got a very strong creative and practical orientation good with skills based subjects with affinity towards creativity and visualizations one is good in sketching drawing painting and so on and can work with dedication and patience on a single project for long time that sort of a candidate is the right candidate for getting into design as a program and the degrees which are available in india for design include bachelor of fine arts bachelor of visual arts bachelor of applied arts bachelor of interior design or one can go for bachelor of design with a lot of different specializations including animation film design ceramic and glass design exhibition design film and video communication furniture and interior design graphic design product design textile design toy design furniture design and so on they are all options which are available for design candidates and at national level the eligibility criteria for getting into design would include 10 plus 2 any combination of subjects national level exams include nid which conducts its own exam known as the mecca of design in the country rather in asia next to that uh, iit bombay conducts a own exam known as uced nift national institute of fashion technology conducts its own exam footwear design and development institution conducts its own exam next to that lot of private universities conduct their own exams including united world institute of design IICD in Jaipur, Narsimhanji in Bombay, Sambhaji in Pune, Shrishti in Bangalore, NIIFT in Mohali, Jain University in Bangalore, MIT in Pune, Narsimhanji Bombay. So there are a lot of different different private institutions which conduct their own exams. And one can become a designer in the area of his or her specialization depending upon which specialization candidate has taken up. So one can become a designer in the area of accessory, animation, apparel, ceramic, communication. fashion fine art footwear furniture industrial interior knitwear leather product sculpture textile toy or ui ux next we talk about economics if the candidate is very strongly academic oriented good with numerics mathematics statistics and economics has got interest in numbers and data analysis and has the ability to spend long hours working on data without getting bored then economics can be a very good option and in india economic specialization degree are available in the area of ba bba bcom or bsc eligibility criteria primarily for ba bba bcom shall be 10 plus 2 any combination few colleges who offer bsc may require mathematics or statistics as a compulsory subject in grade 11 12 beyond economics and some of the national level entrance exams include narsimhanji bombay symbiosis pune in the prestige 
Delhi, Christ University, Bangalore, Aligarh, Aligarh Muslim University, Delhi University, Azim Premji, Bangalore, Jamia University, Banaras Hindu University, GT Coimbra. They all have entrance exams for economics program in their respective university. After finishing economics, one can do most of the things which a candidate passing out from commercial studies or financial studies can do, which may include actually banker, business analyst, credit analyst, data analyst, finance analyst, econometrist, economist, finance consultant, finance manager, investment analyst, market research analyst, policy analyst, portfolio manager, risk analyst, or a stock broker. Moving to engineering, what is the quality check? Who is the right candidate to get into engineering? One who is an academic oriented candidate, somebody who is good with mathematics and sciences with affinity towards technology. One should have interest in latest machines, gadgets, technology, happenings in the world related to technology and have some orientation towards repairing things. And last but not the least, ability to spend long hours with books and or computers during study and in the field work. And the degree options which are available in India include BE, Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Technology, BEME Integrated, BTEC and Tech Integrated, Bachelor of Fashion Technology, or one can also go for a six year integrated degree, which is a diploma plus BTEC after 10th. Yes, this is a newer thing which has just recently started. So one needs to be a 70% candidate in 10th grade with mathematics and general sciences as subjects. Based on that, one can go ahead with a six year degree program. Eligibility criteria would definitely require 10 plus two with a combination of physics, chemistry and mathematics. And the national level exams include JEE main followed by advanced. Then few private universities may have their own exams like Birla, Velour Institute of Technology, Symbiosis, SRM in Chennai, Narsimhanji Bombay, Manipal, Kalinga University, Bhubaneswar, UPS, Dehradun, Geetam University, and also there are certain states which conduct their own entrance exams like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and so on. Next, the professions which one can get into after doing engineering would depend upon which engineering specialization they have graduated from. There are 44 specializations which I have listed down in engineering which they can specialize in and make their profession in the area of aerospace, aeronautical, aircraft maintenance, automobile, biochemical, biological sciences, biomedical, ceramic, chemical, civil, computer sciences, electrical, electronics, electronics and communication, electronics and electrical, electronics and instrumentation, engineering, physics, engineering, science, environmental, fire technology, food and nutrition, food technology, genetics, bioinformatics, Industrial and systems, instrumentation, leather technology, manufacturing science, marine, material science, mathematics and computing, mechanical, mechatronics, metallurgical, mineral, mining, mining machinery, naval architecture, ocean, petrochemical, petroleum, plastic, polymer production, robotics, and textile. There are total 45, 44 such branches which I have listed down for your convenience. Next, we move to hotel management. If the candidate is a combination of practical and people orientation, good with cooking and serving, with good taste buds and have got a knack in experimenting about various cuisines, ability to spend long hours in kitchen, then the candidate may be a very good candidate for hotel management. In hotel management in India, the degree options which are available include Bachelor of Hotel Management, BSc in Hospitality and Hotel Administration, Bachelor of Hotel Management and Catering Technology, Bachelor of Tourism and Travel Management, BA in Hotel Management, BA in Culinary Arts or BBA in different different specialization which may include restaurant management, front desk management, room management and so on. Combination required in 11th 12th is any combination anybody can get into hotel management. The national level entrance exam include mother exam conducted by the National Council of Hotel Management known as JEE. Beyond that individual hotel groups may have their own institutions like Taj Group has got an institution in Aurangabad, Welcome Group tied up with Manipal. Oberoi Group has a set of its own institutions, which are seven in number. Then IPU in the Press University Delhi, separate universities may conduct their own entrance exam, Christ University Bangalore, Symbiosis University. Also, there is Army Institute of Hotel Management, which considers its own exam. Certain states are also there who conduct their own exams for all colleges in that state who teach hotel management as a course, which may include Maharashtra and West Bengal. After finishing hotel management, one can get into becoming an air crew, baker, bar chef, caterer, chef, confectioner, 
food and beverages manager, food stylist, front office manager, hotelier, housekeeping manager, pastry chef, restaurant, sales and marketing manager, or a ship crew. Next, we move to law or legal studies. If the candidate is a combination of academic and practical orientation, uh, sorry, academic and people orientation, good with logical thinking and arguments, the child has interest in politics and social issues, and the child has ability to spend long hours in reading and writing, both during study and later in the profession. Because legal profession as a profession requires you to be very good with reading and writing. Then the degree options which one can get in India include BLLB, BBLLB, BCom LLB, BSc LLB, BSW LLB, and BTEC LLB. Combination required at grade 12 level is any subject combination is fine for law. And the national level entrance exams include CLAC, which is known as the mother exam, conducted by a consortium of 21 national law universities. National University of Delhi conducts its own exam. Then there are private colleges or universities which conduct their own exam, including Symbiosis, Pune, Christ University, Bangalore, BHU, BBP, Jamia, Aligarh, UPS, Dehradun, Kalinga Institute, Bhubaneswar, MSU, Baroda, Army Institute, Punjab University, Chandigarh. And there are certain states also who conduct their own entrance exam for law, including Maharashtra, Kerala, Rajasthan. And after finishing law, one can become an advocate, arbitrator, conciliator, corporate legal consultant, diplomat, investigator, judge, judicial magistrate, lawyer, legal advisor, litigator, mediator, professor, prosecutor, social activist, or a sociologist or so solicitor. Sorry. Next, we talk about liberal studies. Now, this is a very new concept in India. This is hardly seven, eight years old. Now, if a candidate is a combination of academic people and creative orientation, good with languages and social sciences, Interest in studying varied subjects which may involve humanities, commercial studies, management studies, uh, uh, performing arts, sciences, and the child wishes to choose his or her own subjects and study what he or she likes, then liberal arts could be a very good option. And the best part in liberal arts is when you get in, there is no surety of degree. When you get into third year, you choose your major specialization. And based on your major specialization, you get a degree. If your major specialization is in the area of humanities, you get a BA honors degree. If it is in commercial studies, you get BCom honors. Management studies, you get BB honors. And sciences, you get a BSc honors. And some of the, uh, there are only seven, uh, nine, ten universities in India. Most of these universities take their own entrance exam, which may include Flame Pune, Ashoka University in Sonipat. Symbiosis Pune, PDPU in Gandhinagar, Narsimhanji Bombay, Karnavati University in Ahmedabad, Kriya University in Andhra Pradesh, uh, Jindal University in Sonipat, and SRM in Chennai. After finishing, because you study so much versatile category of subjects, so also the professions which are available to you are very, very versatile. So you can look at your screen. I'm not uh, quickly going through it. Uh, there are varied, varied differential professions which one can get into after finishing uh, uh, liberal arts or liberal studies as a course. Next, I move to mass communication. The candidate is a combination of academic people and creative orientation. Candidate is good with language and social sciences, has flair for writing and languages, and can work with dedication on a single story for a long time. Then mass communication can be a very good option. And the degree options available in mass communication include BA in journalism, Bachelor of Mass Communication, Bachelor of Mass Media, Bachelor of Journalism and Mass Communication, BSc in Journalism and Filmmaking, or one can go for an integrated BAMA or MJMC program for Mass Communication and Journalism. Eligibility criteria, 10 plus 2, any combination. National level entrance exams include Xavier's Bombay, Symbiosis Pune, Manipal University, Christ University, Bangalore, Delhi University, and the first University, Jindal University, Karnavati University, MSU in Baroda, or Whistling Woods in Bombay. Next, we talk about Professions, one can, after finishing the course in journalism and mass communication, depending on what specialization you pass out with, one can become an anchor, advertiser, brand manager, blog writer, creative writer, content writer, copywriter, screenwriter, correspondent, director, editor, filmmaker, fashion communication expert, journalist, media programmer, photo journalist, PR specialist, reporter, or a visual merchandiser. <clears throat> Next, we move to medicine and surgery. If the candidate is academic and people orientation combination, Good with basic sciences, with strong interest towards plants, animals, life sciences, excellent memorization power, and ability to spend long hours with books and or computers, then medicine and surgery could be a very good option. Depending upon which area one specializes, 
you can get degree in the area of MBBS, which is allopathic degree, dentistry, Ayurvedic, Yunani, Siddha medicine, naturopathy and yogic medicine or homeopathic medicine. The eligibility combination remains 10 plus 2, combination of physics, chemistry and biology. There is only one single common entrance exam now for any entry into medical college, which is NWT NEET, National Entrance Common Eligibility Test. And depending upon which degree you take, you can become an allopathic doctor, dental doctor, Ayurveda doctor, homeopath doctor, Siddha doctor, naturopathic doctor, or a Yunani doctor. Next is paramedical sciences. If the candidate is again academic and people orientation with basic internet, uh, you know, connect with plants, animals, life sciences with excellent memorization power, long hours of study is comfortable to the child, then one can get into a lot of different specializations in paramedical sciences and they are equally paying, which may include BSc in the area of anesthesia, cardiovascular, critical care, dialysis, exercise and sports science, health information management, medical imaging, medical laboratory, medical record, neuroscience, nuclear medicine, nursing, operation theater, ophthalmic, perfusion, radiotherapy, respiratory, trauma care, and x-ray technology. Also, one can get into the degree of what we call as auxiliary, nursing, midwifery. One can get into optometry, occupational therapy, pharmacy, physiotherapy, doctor of pharmacy, or general nursing midwife. And the eligibility criteria for any of these courses shall by default remain physics, chemistry, biology combination. Most of the top medical colleges in the country conduct their own exams. And also there are few states which conduct separate exams for entry into paramedical sciences. States would include Maharashtra, Odisha, Kerala, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and national level uh, colleges would include All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi, Armed Forces Medical College, Pune, Jipmer in Pondicherry, SVNRI, NIRTAR in Katak, uh, Indrapas University, Delhi, uh, PGI Mayor in Chandigarh, Bharti Vedya Peet in Pune, and so on. And depending upon the specialization, one can become an advanced care paramedic, anesthesia technician, cardiovascular technician, critical care technician, dialysis technologist, imaging technologist, laboratory technologist, nurse or a midwife, nuclear medicine technologist, occupational therapist, ophthalmic technologist, optometrist, operation theater assistant, perfusion technologist, pharmacist, physiotherapist, or a trauma manager. Next, we move to performing arts. If the candidate is very strong in practical and creative orientation, good with any particular form of performing art. Performing art is by and large divided in three areas. Either it could be singing, or it could be dancing, or it could be acting. If the candidate is in, good in any one of these arts, has good physical stamina, good presentation skills, ability to spend long hours in, in uh, you know, practicing the respective form of art, then one can get into the degree in Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Performing Arts, BA in various specialization or BA honors in various specialization or one can go ahead with Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Dance or Bachelor of Acting as a degree. Now, most of the institutions which take students for performing arts would conduct a skill assessment test and in 11th, 12th, any combination is fine as far as eligibility is concerned. So few universities which I have listed include BHU, Christ Bangalore, Baroda, uh, MSU Baroda, Assam University or Lalit Kala Kendra in Delhi. And after finishing your respective degree, one can become an actor, actress, choreographer, composer, dancer, director, dramatist, musician, screenwriter, singer, talent manager, theater artist, trainer, or a vocalist. Next, we move to pure sciences. If the child is very strongly academic oriented, good with mathematics and sciences, and have inclination towards the research, interest in exploring plants, animals, machines, gadgets, anything which relates to science and can spend long hours on books and or computers or in research. Then a lot of different specializations in pure sciences are available to the candidate, which include anthropology, applied physical science, biology, biochemistry, bioinformatics, botany, chemistry, biomedical, environmental science, fire and safety, forensic science, filmmaking, geology, genetics, life sciences, mathematics, nautical sciences, physics, or zoology. And combination of subjects in 11th, 12th include PCM, Physics, Chemistry, Mathematics, or Physics, Chemistry, Biology. National level, level exams include KVPY, that is the Kishore Vigyan Protsahan Yojana, or JWE Main Advanced, or NEET, or there are a few institutions like Department of uh, Atomic Energy in Bombay conducting NEST NEST, 
private universities like Birla conduct their own exam, Narsi Manji, Bombay conducts their own exam, Chennai Mathematical Institute, in, uh, in, Indian Statistical Institute, Christ University, Punjab University, and so on. They all have different entrances for their admission in the BSc programs and finishing in BSc, one can get into becoming an anthropologist, biochemist, biophysicist, biotechnologist, botanist, chemist, forensic scientist, geologist, mathematician, microbiologist, physical scientist, physicist, research scientist, seismologist, statistician, or a zoologist. Rehabilitation studies. I think we'll take another five to six minutes to wrap it up. I'm almost on the end. So if the candidate is a combination of academic and people orientation, good with basic science and affinity towards practical application, interest in life sciences, can spend long hours on books and on computers. One can get into becoming, uh, you know, taking up a degree in prosthetics and orthotics, or theology and speech language pathology, rehabilitation sciences, or special education and rehabilitation. In the first four degrees, which I just shared with you, one might require combination of physics, chemistry, mathematics, or physics, chemistry, biology, or in the other BA, BBA, or BCom in special education, one can go ahead with any subject combination in grade 11 and 12. The entrance exams at the national level include the, uh, you know, Rehabilitation Council of India conducting its own exam known as AIOAT, or then there are private universities or colleges which conduct their own exams like AIASH by Mysore, uh, Bharti Vidya Pete Pune, JIPMER in Pondicherry, BSLP in Chennai, IMIT in Orissa, uh, DMS, uh, DSM NRU in Lucknow, uh, CET at Qatar, West Bengal Conduction own Exam, and so on. After finishing respective degree, one can become a radiologist, auditory therapist, child welfare specialist, clinical social worker, counselor, developmental therapist, mental health support worker, orthotist, prosthetist, autologist, clinical psychologist, rehabilitation therapist, or a speech pathologist. Quality check for veterinary science. If the candidate is good with academic and people orientation, good with basic science with affinity towards zoology, interest in animals and life sciences, again, ability to spend long hours with books. In India, the degrees available in the veterinary science area include Bachelor of Veterinary Science and, and Animal Husbandry, Bachelor of Fishery Science, or BSc in Fisheries. At national level, combination of subject required at 11-12th level remains physics, chemistry, biology. <clears throat> NEET is accepted by a lot of exam, uh, you know, uh, colleges. And also there are national level, uh, state level exams conducted by states for entry into colleges within their geographical boundary, including Assam, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Kerala, West Bengal, Himachal, Jammu Kashmir, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, or Chhattisgarh. Next, the uh, professions one which one can get into include animal husbandry and dairy, animal biotechnologist, animal genetist, animal nutritionist, aquaculturist, dairy scientist, fishery scientist, mariculturist, pisciculturist, livestock production and technologist, poultry scientist, veterinary bioscientist, veterinary pathologist, or a veterinary surgeon. Moving to the physical education and sports, if one is practical oriented, good with a particular sport, very strong mental strength, physical stamina, and has ability to practice a lot on that sport and wants to make career in that particular sport, then one can go for a BA, BBA, BCon, or BSc honors in the area of sports also. After 12th, there is a four-year degree available known as Bachelor of Physical Education and Sports, BPES. Eligibility criteria remains 10 plus 2. Any combination, national level tests I have listed. Most institutes which offer courses related to sports or sports management try to conduct a skill assessment test or a skill proficiency test for the candidate followed by a physical fitness test. <coughs> and one can become an announcer, athlete, coach, commentator, equipment manager, physical trainer, referee, sports analyst, sports manager, or a stadium manager. To give a quick recap of the 20 verticals which we quickly went through, One, uh, agricultural sciences, architecture, arts, humanities, business management, commerce, finance, computer applications, design, fine arts, economics, engineering, technology, hotel management, law, liberal studies, mass communication, medicine, surgery, paramedical science, performing arts, pure sciences, rehabilitation sciences, sports and physical education, and veterinary science. These are 20 verticals which 
are uh, open to students for their bachelor degree programs after 12th in India. If somebody does not want to carry on with the mainstream education, then the options available after 12th with the children also include joining Indian Army, Indian Air Force, Indian Navy, Indian Coast Guard. One can also get into Central Armed Police Forces, which include Assam Rifles, National Security Guard, CRPF, CISF, ITBP, BSF, uh, Sashastra uh, Seema Bal, and so on. One can become a commercial pilot. Also, a candidate after 12th, through a combined higher secondary examination, can join a lot of different government departments, which uh, you know are, are the central government departments. Finally, before I close, I would like to thank uh, Vinayak Garak sir, who is the commissioner. I would like to uh, thank the entire family of uh, Navodaya uh, Vidyalaya Samiti. I would like to thank our deputy commissioner, sir. I would like to thank the coordinators. And most importantly, I would like to thank all the teachers, all the librarians, all the senior uh, faculties, all the vice principals who have joined me in this session. Uh, I will be sharing with you this link. This is a YouTube link, uh, which uh, you know uh, you can click on. Join the YouTube. Here I have put a lot of small videos, five 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 minutes videos, explaining each vertical separately in both languages, Hindi as well as English. So I'm sure this will help you a lot. Uh, also, if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me on. Uh, this number, this number belongs to my secretary, uh, 7600881. My email ID is there. My website is there. Uh, you want to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. Again, my ID for all of them remains IQUEMOHIT, IQ Mohit. Uh, I will share my personal number also with all of you uh, so that in case there is anybody who wants to connect with me personally, I'll be more than happy. Uh, Please keep this number with yourself. Please don't pass on this number to the children because uh, you know then I start getting a lot of uh, uh, calls from children uh, at, at various levels. <coughs> so I'll, I'll just share with you a couple of things. One, I'll I'm sharing with you the uh, YouTube link which you can you know, through which you can connect with me. Uh, and if you have any question related to any particular video or stream, please put it in the comment section there. I'm very active on YouTube. I'll be more than happy to, uh, uh, you know, uh, suggest you that. Okay, I'll start quickly taking the question. Uh, in this, where is how to become a teacher? Sir, I duly respect your uh, query. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the line of becoming a teacher or a lecturer or a professor starts from graduation onwards. And in this presentation, I have only talked about opportunities which children can take up after grade 12. That is the reason teaching as a profession I have not covered. Right. Uh, next question is, uh, uh, sir, slide on professions available after rehabilitation sciences. Okay. I'll quickly take you back to the slide share. Uh, the rehabilitation sciences here is it so okay here is the rehabilitation sciences which you wanted to see okay i'll take up the next question uh i'm 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 very sure the the link of youtube which i have sent you it is going to be of great great help to all teachers faculties and and there is a lot of information which every day i keep uh, you know putting onto this link or or this uh, uh, channel uh some next is outstanding session we are grateful thank you so much uh, sir ma'am uh, it is it is it is a it is indeed my pleasure to connect with senior teachers like all of you uh, it is it is always indeed my pleasure kindly brief about cyber safety and security okay uh, 
cyber safety and security falls under two categories one it falls under forensic science and second it falls under law because there is also something which is known as cyber law by and large if somebody wants to actively work on the legal front then he or she should go through the law degree if somebody wants to work on uh, uh, the, the the forensic part then forensic sciences third option is that if somebody wants to be a cyber security expert then one has to go through computer applications as a field so depending upon which direction is more aligned to the child's oapi we should suggest because all three lines would ultimately land or lead the child towards cyber security and safety i hope i have answered your question uh next is the uh, is there any standard questionnaire to be administered so that we can identify uh, the I, i understand so that we can identify the aptitude personality interest of the child uh, this is something which uh, <clears throat> i had been uh, uh, encountering this question for last two days also see uh, there are lot of standard questionnaires which are available there are three problems with those questionnaires one most of those questionnaires are of american origin because america is far ahead in psychometric and psychological uh, research than us so they are not balanced towards indian requirement that is one issue second issue is when we administer a questionnaire to a child the final report will come based on the responses of the child and the child at grade 9 10 11 12 is not sufficiently serious and neither sufficiently clear of the purpose of administration of that particular questionnaire so when i started my career 20 years back and started administering these questionnaires i found out that after 5 years a lot of children started coming back with complaints stating we did what you asked us to do but now we are in a completely lost state so what should we be doing because we are not getting what we expected to get then i realized that most of these students start you know marking these questionnaires haphazardly that is something which creates a lot of problem in from for the counselor or the psychologist to actually put it across so actually the best way of counseling remains one on one personal counseling through interaction process and in the new due course that is what exactly uh, we are trying to get into in order to equip each and every one of you towards the method of one on one interviewing with a flow in which you can gauge the child do brain mapping that is the term brain mapping which i use for it and i'll be happy to share that knowledge and details with you which you will be able to with which help your children take the right stream or uh, uh, you know uh, career profession ahead next question is after puc there are integrated courses in ries uh, ma'am i am sorry i could not understand the full form of ries please share feedback form okay 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 very good thank you thank you so much uh, attendance is done thanks uh, it it was a good session lot of venues for the students after 12 thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, jagannathan sir uh, it's 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 great of you i am very much thankful thank you so much ravi kumar sir uh, okay some light on bsc in community science see uh, the the when you talk about uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the basic things which as a community we need in order to sustain or survive equally falls under something which the study for which is known as community science and community science falls under agricultural sciences so if you look at uh, the basic things that is the food shelter and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, clothing uh, all these th three things fundamentally come from the from, from the from earth right and that is where agriculture talks about it so for community science there are specialized colleges who generally uh uh you know uh, uh, conduct courses as a combination of community science and home science and that is what you should look at it so i i'll, I'll also share with you i think the uh, book uh, details from where you can get the free book uh, uh 
and and i'm sure that will that is going to be of great help to you uh, to everybody uh, so i i've just shared a link with you from where you can uh, download the free career handbook and year on year uh, updated versions shall be available to you on the same link free of cost uh, and also somebody is asking for the number 9979266166 sir this uh, man this is my personal number so you can please uh, save it whenever you communicate with me or you message me please write your name and the and the school from where you are i'll be more than happy to answer to your queries uh, and please don't share this number with your students <clears throat> next is uh, uh, next question i am going to take up uh, this session will help us guide students in the right direction okay thank you so much shweta ma'am uh, for pursuing rekha ma'am uh, i will i will give you rights to speak uh, uh, please uh, speak ma'am i could not understand your query rekha ma'am you can unmute yourself yeah hello am i audible yes ma'am you are audible uh, because you have told that after puc education pursuing education ma'am no direct option degree we have to complete like that you told but right. in a major regional institute of education there are integrated courses where degree and bed together it will be uh, carrying yes. out education yeah yes that's what i am ri is regional institute of education i got it now i got it ma'am uh, integrated degrees uh, there is there is uh, you know another literature in which i have also listed down all possible integrated degrees whether they are now integrated degrees also i'll share with you there are three kinds of integrated degrees one are dual bachelor degrees for example ba llb bcom llb these are the degrees of law they are double bachelors because both the degrees are known or or nomenclated as bachelor degrees second ba bed bcom bed bsc bed bba bed they are also dual bachelor degrees so one is this category of degree second degrees are which are bachelor plus masters integrated degrees so you have bba mba bsc msc bca mca so they are again second category of integrated degrees and the third category of integrated degrees are degrees which are after 10th which i shared with you like diploma plus degree so they are integrated i hope we all know that after 10th the three year diploma program in any field whether it is design engineering agriculture uh, paramedical sciences they all are treated equivalent to 10 plus 2 by most of the states most of the states i'm saying not all states now those degrees are also known as integrated degrees where a candidate goes for a diploma plus an integrated uh, plus a degree there the entry into the degree may be a lateral entry where the candidate directly goes to the second year like engineering or it can be a three year diploma followed by a three year regular degree which may be something like design so those degrees are yes available they are not only in education but lot of other fields also thank you so much recommend <clears throat> uh next i okay i'm just scrolling down uh amita prasad madam thank you so much for your kind appreciation uh okay kindly throw some knowledge about artificial intelligence okay artificial intelligence comes from the background of programming or coding how you integrate a uh, human brain uh, how, how you integrate human brain in computer so that the computer can automatically take the next step of response a classic very simple example of of artificial intelligence is uh, if you are using an apple device it is siri whatever you ask siri to do it will do it in response another classic example could be uh, you know uh, what you call this uh, uh, alexa whatever you ask alexa to do alexa will respond to you there are classic examples of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence falls under 
computer application area not computer engineering area because there is nothing hardware about it it is all software that is what is artificial intelligence i hope it is going to be more clear to you okay okay <coughs> Kindly tell me about e-business. Okay, again, e-business requires two things. One, it requires your basic understanding of digital marketing, and second, it requires your basic understanding of product shelving. Product shelving falls under management, that is business management. Digital marketing falls under uh, a computer application. So this combination, if you have, even if you have knowledge about. you may not have gone through a degree program or a, a formal education in it still e business is a doable thing and now lot of different plot platforms offer you uh, you know free base platforms to start up your e business uh this is a beautiful quest which somebody has put those who tried everything and experience about most of the fields and failed those are the type of people who are going to who are who are becoming teachers that is why uh, you know knowledge we have knowledge and experience about everything sir uh, i would like to use a beautiful quote by anonymous somebody i don't know from where i picked up this quote he says what is the difference between a slip and a fall so fall is failure what is the slip difference between a slip and a fall and the answer to this is that a slip becomes a fall if you refuse to get up so till the time we have got up and we have hit it back there is nothing like failure there is nothing like failure i'll share with you a little bit of my background my parents are both doctors my father is a surgeon my mother is a gynecologist i by default was supposed to go for science b group i chose not to go for it i did my b tech then i did my m tech then i did my mba after mba i came into counseling and today 100% of the work which i do is of a psychologist point is it took me probably 8 to 10 years to identify what is something which is my core strength which i would love to do throughout my life even if i am not being paid for it and that is something which i say that i might have slipped multiple times but till the time you keep that courage to get up and bounce back it is a slip not a fall or a failure so as a teacher i believe lot of people look us look upon us because i am also a teacher i teach at a lot of places lot of people look upon us with the thought process that this person might not have got anything in life that is the reason he or she has become a teacher which is not the right thing when i finished my masters in business i uh, in 2003 i got a offer from coca cola beverages to head their marketing division at a salary package of 13 lakhs i left that and came into teaching so what you are saying socially teachers are being looked upon like that but i believe even when a teacher becomes a teacher after a lot of slips he or she gains tremendous amount of experience to carry on the legacy of teaching forward so that is what is my call on it how to convince present generation with examples on career in superior uh, with examples one career is superior to another one in his or her perception uh, i think this is an excellent question the way i explained the complete alphabetical order of careers to you i always tell children and parents never you find out a career and try to fix the child in that career career counseling never works that way always you look at the strengths of the child and i have shared with you the format that is the orientation aptitude personality interest based on that you figure out the career which is in line with the strengths of the child then fit the child into that career so primarily the process of counseling is all about explaining the child that why you should go ahead with x career which in your perception may be good bad worse irrespective of the fact but 
the base of your OAPI is more important than your perception. That is the way we need to break that myth in the mind of the child. Next question. Child will be confused what to do as they themselves don't know their strengths. How to help them? Uh, Gita man, the same way as I shared, we will get into the next phase of training where I'll explain you how you need to counsel the child. Based on that, you'll be able to share the strengths of the child and uh, the further course of action to the child. <clears throat> if a student have art subject in 12th, how and from which university he can make career in artificial intelligence or robotics? Okay, uh, sir, ma'am, uh, artificial intelligence, as I said, falls under uh, computer applications. Even if the child has taken arts, ask her to join BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application. And along with that, ask her to do a lot of online courses which are now available on artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, cloud computing. You know, they will all orient her towards artificial intelligence. Then after bachelor's, she can go for MSc IT or MCA and get into, uh, you know, executing coding or programming, which is the back end of artificial intelligence. That is the method. Okay. Okay. I'm taking up the next question. Can you please share this PPT? It will be fruitful for students. Uh, Bishek sir, sir, definitely I will share with you this PPT, but this is not for students. This is for teachers because this contains so much amount of information that if you give it to the students, they will come to you 10 times confused. So please don't give this to students. I will also share with you the, the link which I have shared with you for the book. So that book you may please feel free and share it with the students. I have given you my number. Uh, again, there is a uh, teacher who is asking me for my number. I have again shared the number in the group. You may please pick it up, save it, send me a WhatsApp on this number. I'll be more than happy to attach the latest book and send it to you. Also, Ilyas sir has, I think, already shared the book with you. And I have also given you the link from where you can pick up the book. That book you can share with the children because that book will not make them confused. That book will rather make them more aware. <clears throat> Next question is uh, artificial intelligence. I have done. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Wonderful session. Thank you so much, ma'am, sir. Uh, highly informative. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Sir, if PDF is sent in our mail, contains very hazy pics and are not clear to read, please send the document a complete career guide, the best readable format. Sir, please send me a WhatsApp on the number. I will right away send it to you. It will be absolutely clear. I don't know how the quality went lost, but please send me a WhatsApp. I'll send it to you right away. So that, that, that is absolutely clear. And even in the link, you can download it. It's absolutely clear. Uh, okay, next question I'm just taking. Attendance is done. Feedback is done. Nice and very useful session. Thank you, Rupendra, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, if all schools can get a recorded copy of your session, it will be very good. Uh, sir, ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, uh, what I will do is uh, I will put this on uh, 